All right, we're recording. We got recording here. Is it official? We got recording here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I mean, yeah, you. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Back. Don't call it a comeback to the agents of the brokerage podcast. I am your guest host, Ryan Hilliard, here with the one and only Todd Back. Todd, how you doing, my man? Ryan, how we doing? <laughs> Two year hiatus. We're back. We're back, baby. This started out with you as guest number one on the podcast, and here we are with the relaunch, switch and rolls. <laughs> this is exciting. Feels good, doesn't it? Feels great. I like being on this side of the table. I've got you in the hot seat today. How's that? Is it hot over there? How's it feeling? It's a little warm. We, yep. does, is the AC on? I mean, I'm feeling a little, <laughs> a little toasty, but it, uh, it's very nice. That's great. It's very nice. Well, buddy, good, to, good to be with you. Honored to interview you, and excited to oh. hear what my man Todd Back has to say. I'm excited. You excited? Good, because it's going to be good. So, without further ado. I have a list of questions that we're going to chat through today. Okay. Does that sound okay? That sounds great. <laughs> like any good podcast host, I'm going to try and do my part for you, lead you, and then you're going to just absolutely knock it out of the park. Okay. Good. Todd, just, uh, I mean, get it kicking, man. Just tell us tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Todd back? Let the ladies and gentlemen know out there listening today. Well, first off, I'm used to asking the questions. So this is, it's going to be, I may, it's, by the end of it, Ryan, we may be just interviewing you, part two, but we'll, we'll just see what happens. But, we'll see. Um, but yeah, man, this is awesome. So yeah, my name's Todd Back. I am 39 years old, Ryan. In August, I will be 40. Just wanted to throw that out there. I went, born and raised in Lexington. Okay, went to Tate's Creek High School, Creek Dog. proud Creek Dog, yeah, baby. and I went to the University of Kentucky, got a degree in management, so many things you can do with a management degree. Good things. And I have a lovely, beautiful, and talented wife, Lauren, and we have three awesome kids. We've got Madison James, she is six years old, just started kindergarten at Rosa Parks Elementary, going fantastic right now. (laughs) I got Sam the Man, Wild Sam, who is going to be three in a few days. Um, So he's at the Centenary School, and then we've got our little one, Jack. Oh, buddy, Jack. He is a handful. He is seven months old, also at Centenary School. And, uh, And yeah, man, I love being a dad, love being, and, you know, I just, that's me. That's me in a nutshell. That's that's great. Oh, man. and I guess do we need to talk about? I've been in real estate yeah. since 2006 when I was just a Six. wee a wee young pup. Well, I've been in it. I got my 15 year pin um, this last wow. uh, yeah at our last uh, recognition ceremony there with L Bar. So I've been in it for 15 years, man. Bro, that means you're like a sophomore in high school of real estate. Does that does, how does that feel? It's it's you're something. Si- 16 years. It's something, and it's like when the Super Bowl, which just happened, that halftime show, <laughs> all of these classic songs, you know, I was like, Cla- the, I have all those CDs, and they came out. Like, I went to Best Buy to buy those CDs <laughs> when they came out, and so, you know, I, I love it. They're the same age as me. I was like, you, you guys are doing great up there. It's Is fantastic. That, when you realize you're the new target market, and we were laughing at our parents when they had were going nuts for Tom Petty, you think... <laughs> we've made it we've the, made it the cycle just repeats you know <laughs> and we just we get in on the joke way too late but it, it uh it was fantastic but yeah man it was oh. what a time what a time what a time to be alive what a halftime show hmm. um todd we're, we're gonna go into some real estate stuff because okay. that's what the people want to hear yeah. so 2006 man that is that's amazing to just hear it but what what made you it's in your I, we know it's in your blood but yeah what, what made you get into real estate man Why well real estate okay so let me just tell you so went to the university of kentucky and let me just tell you uh i had a fun time it was a fun time at the university of kentucky had a mm-hmm. great time wouldn't change it for the world had a management degree as you're graduating you're just wondering you know like what where's the next step and as you know when you're 22 23 like you know 
there can be some limited opportunities, you know, and this is at the time, both my parents are in real estate. Mm -hmm. The real estate market in Lexington is rocking. Mm -hmm. I really don't know anything about it other than mom and dad are in it and you know, a lot of houses are getting built and things are, are happening, you know? Right. And so I went on a few job interviews, talked to, you know, some folks, had some different opportunities, but the more and more I talked to, especially dad about it, he just said, you know, if you're not sure what you want to do, just let's get your real estate license and, you know, learn from us and just see if you like it. And if you don't like it, go on, do something else. But if you like it, it's like, here you go. And um, that sounded pretty good to me. And so got my real estate license and just never looked back. And legit, this will shock so many people here at the brokerage. But like, I mean, for six years, I don't think I said a word. I was just a sponge until yeah. I was about 30. And uh, then just, you know, started exploring avenues in real estate, man. But that's but that's how that's that's how that part happened that's great man i feel a little bit like i'm looking today at a todd back from 2006 with that clean shaven face this is well, a new look todd well talk to me about it you've been bearded for four years well this wasn't on the question sheet you sent me <laughs> Ryan. but and it's actually i want to go into it, seven years since seven. i started growing the since i've had the beard mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. i just thought this January and February has really just been a, uh, again, I mentioned a seven month old mm -hmm. and it's just been a challenging time for, for, for just, you know, there's moments where you're just like, man, this is, whew, this is a lot here. And I know you don't know anything what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> got, you you don't know that. And so I was like, you know what, let's switch it up here. Let's just get a little shave going. And, uh, yeah. And it was great. And I actually grew the beard because I wanted to look a little older, okay, in my real estate. Yeah, I wanted to look yeah. a little, add a little something. Yeah. Um, and now my wife told me that shaving it, I look just like my old real estate photos when I was 30. So I was like, this is a win. <laughs> this is a win all the way around. I mean, I'm going a little Ben Affleck. That's just what I'm throwing out there. Mm. That's That was my first impression. Mm. I mean, cl the clean-shaven Ben Affleck, like it just kind of surprised you. Well, Surprised me too in, in a good way. Hey, you know what? This is me. It's good that just the wind on your face feels nice. <laughs> feels good. It does. I'm pumped for you, bro. <laughs> uh, well, you you've talked a little bit about it. I mean, we're you you've let us know how long you're in real estate. So mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna jump to a, a little bit of work life balance. Ooh. You've got uh, it's hot. It's a hot topic. A lot of people in our you know people are reevaluating post COVID mid wherever we are with COVID, what uh, work and life look like and what they want to do. So. You've got a lot going on, my man. You help us. I call him the COO of the brokerage, which I, he somewhat takes and somewhat doesn't. But <laughs> he also sells real estate, and he's got three kids. He's got a wife. He's got a lot going on. So how do you have it all, man? How do you do it? Well, this is a question that we could go on for hours and days, which I know uh, me and you do it all the time, mm -hmm. you know, which is why we – but I think, Ryan, at getting ready to be to be 40 – and this kind of veers away from probably a lot of what we're talking about here. But I think it's this it's this mindset that like we cannot do it all. And I think for so long in our life, especially, you know, we're you know, the iPhone didn't come out till 2007. Right. Mm -hmm. So then look at everything else that came after that, like with Facebook, with Instagram, with seeing everybody doing, all, you know, seeing everyone's highlight reel mm -hmm. that you start thinking that, like, yeah, I can do everything. And if I can't do everything, something's wrong with me. Like right, I need a right. new morning routine. I need um, to, to read Atomic Habits again. I need <laughs> yeah. to, you know, get in some coaching club. Like I, it's me. I need to figure some things out. Right. But what I'm realizing now is that like there's only so many hours in a day. And you just have to get real with yourself mm -hmm. and understand that you can't do everything. And that's okay. That's all right. And then you say, this is what's most important to me right now in my life. And this is what I'm choosing to do. And you have just a, a mindset and clarity with that, that like, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm choosing to do. And it is so freeing when you mm. do that. And so there are things that I know I can't pursue a thousand percent. Like maybe if I didn't have three kids, maybe I would want to do a few of these things. Mm -hmm. Maybe if my kids are a little bit older, maybe I would want to do some. But mm -hmm. I can't, you know, like this is where I am. I love every second of it. And when I that 
switch was flipped for me, it it made a, a significant like difference in my just my everyday life. And so balance, I think, you know, some people say there is no balance. Other people are like, mm-hmm. yeah, of course there's balance. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just getting clear on what your priorities are. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, there are times when those probably don't make sense to other people outside of my circle. Mm -hmm. And those people in my circle, it makes complete sense to. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's just getting clear on your priorities, what's most important at the end of the day, at the end of like, we don't want to get, we're both criers, we don't want to get emotional here, but it's just like at the end of it, Mm -hmm. what are you going to be okay with, you know, that you did or you did not do? Mm -hmm. And so I try and think about those things, have no regrets about it and just go with it. But uh, so yeah, man, it's just getting clear on those priorities. And as you know, those change over time, Mm -hmm. different seasons of life. And where we are now, it's like, okay, like this is what I'm choosing to do. And I love every second of it. And uh, yeah, it's made a significant impact on my life, switching that, that mindset. Yeah. What do you think? <clears throat> well, that's, that's amazing. I, I mean, kudos to you. I know that you, you do a great job of keeping kind of like a, a tighter inner circle. And I also, Todd's in a group text with me that he, I know that you're strategic with your phone time based on your times of replies, which I really enjoy. (laughs) And I think that that's something we can all take to heart, you know, just on on, when's the phone on, when's it off. Uh, Do you you have anything you want to say to that? I think that's pretty impressive. Oh, you don't have to. I'm so glad to that. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah. Our relationship with our phone right Mm -hmm. now is something to behold. I mean, it really is something that, I I mean, it's just, it's wild, you know, like you just go out in public and literally, you know, 90% heads are down. Yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. I just know for me, like what I'm really, really, what, what I've like the last 18 months, you know, 12 months for sure, making a, a big effort to make the phone a less part of my daily interactions. Mm. And, and I even, right, I even went so far as to get an iPhone mini. Yeah. I got the mini. I got Come the on. I got the little guy. And, <laughs> um, you know, I've since went back to the medium size, but <laughs> cause it just, it just didn't, I mean, but a little too little, but it is making a, a conscious effort mm-hmm. to say that like this is what my phone is is for mm-hmm. this is how i'm going to use it mm-hmm. and like that's just that's just that and mm-hmm. you know again other people may be like that's crazy that's ridiculous but i'm like you know what there's a reason these phones like everyone has it attached to their hand. I mean, they are beautiful. They're sexy. They're amazing. (laughs) You can do everything in the world on it. Like it can be your everything, but I'm trying to make it to be just like a community as minimal as possible is what I'm trying to make it. Yes. I even got the other day where I was like, should I flip it to black and white? But I thought that's, that's maybe going a step too far for right now. I like where you're heading, though. You know, you're that, heading in that right direction, and you're analyzing it, and you're reflecting on it. Brother. I, I don't think anybody, not many people are doing that. That's where I'm going with it. Yeah. And I think that's something in, in uh, later discussions. I would love to talk mm-hmm. more in depth about this because I just think that that's, that can be an issue mm-hmm. for just mm-hmm. a multitude of things, you know, when you mm-hmm. become attached to uh, to that device. And, and when you have not even talking what you're doing on that device, like mm-hmm. just having it in right. your hand, but oh, let yeah. alone if you're scrolling and... Just like wait, wait, hey, pause, yeah, and let's let's go for a walk, which yeah. we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Yeah, I have, I, I can't wait to talk about on. going for walks. I love that little side note there. We both have young girls. Both of our girls are six, and so I, I've been thinking a lot about our relationship with phones for that time to come. But we'll oh. talk, we'll talk oh. about that in another. Oh man, another time. Back to real estate. Yeah, Todd, if if uh, you could go back to day one, two thousand six, to a realtor Todd oh. back, oh. and uh, give yourself some advice from a real. And, to a realtor to realtor or just as a mentor to Todd Beck. Mm-hmm. What, what are you going to tell yourself? Well, the first thing I tell myself is when you're 25, don't dress like you're 50. And <laughs> that is the the mistake. <laughs> Some very pleats in the pants or what do we got? Oh, not just pleats, around pleats and cuffs. Okay. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I just, you know, I, I think I was like, well, I'm here and this is how everyone dresses in this circle or the company that I joined. 
And I mean, here I am at 25 and I'm rocking, you know, pleated pants with uh, the cuffs. And I mean, I'm wearing sweat, like chunky sweaters with, uh, you know, and I, when I look back now, I'm like, what were you doing? Um, who are you appealing to? Like, no one was going to be like, this guy, how old are you, man? Like, 25? Like, why are you? Dr-? But <laughs> Lauren oh, and I, we oh, get a, we get a kick out of that. No, but, but in, <laughs> And I still have the very nice. I mean, you purchased still, at Logan. Very nice. Oh, Logan's yeah. Good. But we yeah. should we should just yeah. went flat front with no, you know with yep. no, with no plate. Just uh, who knew? Who knew? Who knew? At I mean, that time, your look today. Not everybody can see it, but well, fantastic. No tie. You. Nice jacket. Yeah. I mean, casual. that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Biz so, cash. Biz cash. So <laughs> uh, no, but that well, that is a serious piece of it. But but there there are so many things, man. And you know me, I'm I'm mm-hmm. big on this, all of this type of stuff. It's mm-hmm. some of my favorite. Th- stuff to talk about oh, yeah. and I would say this that even if your fu- anybody's future self can morph back 15 years to talk to that 25 year old mm-hmm. version mm-hmm. so many times that the 25 year old is not at a place where they're going to receive that the proper way I and I think that you can know different things but until you walk through life and you have successes you have failures you you have the ups and the downs and and Mm -hmm. like it it just starts kind of like reaffirming everything like some of these stories that you that you hear you know and that's why like things that your parents told you when you're growing up and that you thought were just ridiculous and then as you get kids and as you get older you're just like they knew it all along they were on it um, but if there are two things that would be like big overarching things mm-hmm. besides like put as much money as you can in a SEP, invest in, you know, S and P 500, or if I could go back 15 years, it was like, just put everything in Apple and just forget <laughs> about it. Um, and buy as much real estate as possible. Mm-hmm. The two overarching themes, and when I was thinking about this too, it's number one is, is mindset. Mm-hmm you have to have a proper mindset and you know i'm big on this positive dog negative dog with john gordon Mm -hmm. and inside of all of us there there's a positive dog and a negative dog everybody has it and it's just which one are you going to feed you're going to feed that negativity or are you going to feed that positivity because whichever you feed grows and so i think if you don't have a proper mindset Everything else kind of doesn't matter. And in your personal life and your business life, mm-hmm. if you aren't thinking the right things, learning about the right things, like it all that other stuff is just filler and it really doesn't matter. Yeah. And so like you got to have that proper mindset. So it's like read these five books, hang out with these people right. that are on that same journey as you are and really just like go in with hey I've got to get better. I've got to have these right people. I've got to have the right info coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, so mindset would be huge. That's correct. And the second we're going to go Ted Lasso on them, yeah. and it's to believe. You know, to, to believe in yourself, mm-hmm. believe in what you're doing, believe in thoughts that like, hey, I can do this. You know, because I just think mm-hmm. so many times we, we have those negative thoughts come into our head like, well, I can't do this i can't do that like who do you think you you know like and so it's just to believe like believe in yourself believe in what you're doing and you know so much of that like relates back to what we're doing now at the brokerage and you know if if i didn't have the strongest belief ever Mm -hmm. that we could do this like we this wouldn't be here um and so i just think that like that is uh that's just those are two mindset And just to believe in yourself and to know that you can do it. Because I just think there are so many times that we can achieve such amazing things that even if like if our parents didn't have it, our friends didn't have it, our circle doesn't have it, you can get it. Yeah. But like you got to believe in yourself Mm because if you don't believe, if you don't have the right mindset, everything else really doesn't matter. Bro, that first of all, that's awesome. I think that's such a great piece of advice and i think that you going back and saying i don't know if my 25 year old self would have received it i think that is so well said you've been through so much life now you're almost 40. oh see don't laugh yeah. at that <laughs> but hey that well that was over the hill for our parents i don't know you know if you remember that that was when they threw in the black and white party and you were going downhill bro but you, that's no longer i mean you're on the uptick bro so uh anyway that's just 
That's great stuff, man. Thank you for thank you for sharing that. And and Todd, I can uh, attest to my mindset has changed being around Todd just in a lot of things that he has taught me, and the way that uh, he operates his day. I also think that Todd's really good at reflecting and taking taking that thirty thousand foot view of things, analyzing and then making a change if needed. So, uh, kudos to you, brother. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. Uh, talk to us about your most memorable moment. In real estate, well, <laughs> you're looking at it, right? No, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, so there's two. I'll have to go to to to, to two because one is obviously opening up the brokerage, mm-hmm. and it's it's aligning with just a special group of people, and like that is like I, I think about it often. You know, it's just like, what if we didn't do this and everything that's happened like over the past three years with the pandemic, just with everything, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and I know that being around like such a dynamic group of people, a group of people that I, that I really respect and that like, I know that I can learn as much from them as I hope that they learn from me. Mm -hmm. It is just such a powerful thing. And like, that to me that's my most proud it's my most memorable and it's what we're in right now and it's just it's so cool to see like just what we have built in three years and you know it's like and i get to do it with this amazing group of people you know you being one of those people my man and it's just uh it really is just learning from others applying it talking and one thing i love about our group is that we talk about failures Mm -hmm. we talk about successes Mm -hmm. and like that to me is like that goes beyond business stuff like that's like life stuff that's like when you look back at like hey what'd you do you know like what'd you do who'd you impact who'd you touch and and you can just you know you can point to to this amazing uh you know thing that we're doing here and it's just like that you know so that so that i could speak for hours on that and you know that but the the second you know as far as being memorable i think of being in it for 15 years again mm-hmm. you, you learn these things at different at different at different times and um oh my gosh see i, I may get choked up on here a little bit but like for so many years man like for i don't know the first 10 years mm-hmm. of me being in real estate i think i legit bought built or sold one to two houses my first 10 years in real estate. Like I I, I moved every year and just because I thought it was fun. And that's at a time that like, Hey, no kids. Like I can, I can do this. I can do this. Like this is, this is fun. Like I enjoyed Like it was like, okay, like, Ooh, a new floor plan came out. Let's build it. Uh, Ooh, that lot's amazing. Let's do that. And I was learning so much about my craft while also like I was in it, you know, so I could relate to everybody mm-hmm. because it's like, oh yeah, like I'm moving next week or I'm just, I'm, we're building right now. Oh <laughs> right. my gosh. Right. Um, and then, you know, I got in, in 2016, 17, um, I went through a divorce and finding my next house, right? You just, you take for granted like what that home really means to you. Mm-hmm. And I remember I had looked six to eight months and I wanted to live in a, in a certain place um, to be close to my ex-wife because we share a, a daughter. And I just wanted to make sure that like for her sake, we were very close to where it was like just to create a great, you know, oh, yeah. childhood, everything for her while we, we, we go through co-parenting, which mm-hmm. is going amazing right now. Yeah. And finally find this house in Palomar. And I'll never forget it. Like I walked in, okay, and I mean I almost started. Cry- I did. Like I started crying a little bit because it was like this is my house. Like this is home, mm-hmm. and this is what home means to me. And it just, it just like connected all these dots of like what we're doing and why it's so important and how this is. It's more than just like a house, or mm-hmm. it's more than a transaction. Like this is. This is something that is a, a fulfillment, you know, in someone's journey, like mm-hmm. to own a home. Like it is just, it's where they spend a majority of their time. It's where just all these life moments happen. Like it's a big deal. And that just, you know, brought me back to all these folks that I've helped throughout my career that sometimes like I knew it was a big deal, but maybe like didn't treat it as such because it just became like, 
you know, you're helping 50 to 60 people a year. It just, it's a lot, right. but it is cool to, to reconnect with some of those folks and to, to see how well they're doing. And Hey, these houses that they bought with me, uh, for 175 are now worth 350. And okay. I'm like, Hey, wasn't that a great decision <laughs> five, six years ago? It was right. awesome. Um, and then the next one too is there was a client that I was working with in my, my new construction days. She was a bilateral above knee amputee. Mm. And she, she was just an ama- amazing person, loved getting to work with her. But we customized a home that was basically, you know, it was built to all her specifications. And that was something that at the time the builder really didn't do. And so it was just, I was so involved in the process from the, you know, from the design to working with the architects to working with the builder to the client, like touched every part of it. And to see it at the end when, when she got to move in, it was like, it was amazing because that just made her quality of life better. Like, and I sold their previous house and to see that compared to this, I'm just like, oh my gosh, like this, like literally is going to enhance your life. And it it just is like big picture stuff that it's hard to even wrap your head around sometimes, but it's things that we get to do as part of our job. And it's just, it's just awesome, man. So it's just wrap all those up. That's That's the No, that's amazing, man. People are wondering right now, you could move every year or two years there was actually houses available back then they're saying <laughs> well <laughs> i'll just get that's when the glory days of building in to, Lexington, to some of our our our, our younger listeners out there right, right. there was a time in uh 2012 2013 where the government actually gave first-time home buyers eighty five hundred dollars um as a tax credit just to buy a house <laughs> Like you hear that now, and then they came out with a second one that you didn't have to pay back. You never had to pay back. It was like, hey, here's ten grand. Just please buy a house, so then that person can buy another house and that program. Yeah, you want to talk about ten years changing things? (laughs) Wow, that's great perspective. Seriously, for our younger listeners, you know that's that's huge. But man, I appreciate you sharing. You shared some fun stuff shared some personal stuff that is yeah. really good that's what our i mean i think that's what our listeners want we all want authentic in life i think that's one thing we've learned uh through the pandemic and other things it's just we want real man so thank you for sharing that was that was awesome you know me right open book you got my back yeah. how do we, that's how, how we, we learn. learn that's how, how we, we learn. learn that's right well man we're gonna move into some quick hitters how about that we've already arrived quick quick hitters, hitters. <laughs> good so, but there, but there's some fun ones. There's some juicy stuff here too. So, uh, talk to us about two podcasts that you listen to. Just two podcasts. <laughs> that's, what that's, I, that's what I put two. I was gonna go for one, and I went. I added to two. Okay, let's just be on. I know we want, but here's. I got into a mode where I was almost listening to so many podcasts mm-hmm. that again I had to go back to that that balance, right, and what your priorities are, and it's like, all right, like. We need to back this down a little bit, and yeah. and um, you know. But now, honestly, the the ones I listen to during the pandemic, I would listen to these these ones by NPR that was just like a fifteen minute update, like I think it's called "Consider This" mm. right off the bat, just to kind of know what's happening. Right. That has faded out. Okay, I have not. I'm like, all right, I'm <laughs> good on that for right now. But the the latest ones, man, what what would they be? Some real estate related one. Mm-hmm. I you know, my guy Gary V. I listen to I listen to a lot of Gary mm-hmm. V's stuff. Not the stuff that's kind of popular. I like yeah. his uh, his older like keynotes that are an hour long. Yeah. Like I like listening to the whole hour of those. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this is a good one: the uh, David Sinclair Lifespan Podcast. Ooh. Um, this guy actually, Josh Lynch, turned me on to, to this guy and his. His whole thing, he's a, he's a PhD at Harvard, and mm-hmm. his whole thing is all about, like, how do we just get healthier mm. to, to live longer, wow. okay? And so it is just a fascinating, like, 
to, to, to hear this and listen to it because it's just a different perspective. Like there's not, um, it's just different. Like it's not like, hey, you, you do this because you want to look good at the beach or right. you do yeah. this because you want your bench press to go up 100 pounds. He's like, no, you do this because you want to live as long as you possibly can. Yes. And I find that fascinating right now. And I just think that uh, with kids and stuff, it's just, again, I don't want to get great. too like, emo- but, but it's like, that's, that is really interesting. And so that's where kind of my head's at right now. I love it. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's a lot of that. Hit us with that name again. Lifespan David Sinclair. Boom. It's I th- great. I think that's fun. Yeah. Hey, those Harvard PhDs, they know a thing or two. And he's, it, this guy's, a, is he a little older? He's kind of well, started he's to in live. His, he's in his stuff. 50s, yeah. but he looks like he's 30. So it's yeah, one of those yeah. where it's like, yeah, it's, what's that dude doing? What's, and it's, you know what's amazing, though, man? What's amazing is that the things that he talks about doing, like, they're not going to blow you away. Yeah. They're, they're like things that you know that you should be doing, but you have no idea the impact that they really make. Yeah. You know, and a lot of that, again, like growing up, being in athletics and then just really like in college, just re- being really big into like lifting weights and not doing all that stuff. You, you you start hearing things that in that circle is normal. Like oh, yeah. it's normal to eat like 400 grams of protein and like two pounds of chicken <laughs> a day. Like that's normal, you know? Oh, and yeah. and then you hear other people talking and they're like, no, like that is like you need to be eating mostly plants. You need to be getting sunlight. You need to be moving and walk. Like you hear all the, I don't yeah. know. It's just no, like it's coming a, from a different angle. It's yeah. like, yeah, like that does make a lot of sense. Um, I have seen a picture, true or false. Yeah, at one point there was a shoulder vein uh, in Dodd Beck's. Uh, upper right arm is that true those weightlifting days that's very true i'm not gonna <laughs> listen my man was yoked thing I've seen you, it. when you put in the work things happen that's right. and that uh yeah that that was like a fun stage in my life and then i started real estate and that was that was gone quickly <laughs> that was gone quickly yeah, take clients to lunch a lot well, of tasty lunches out there when you eat cheddars four times a week <laughs> for your first five years of real estate not great things are gonna gonna happen uh, but it was hey, del- delicious. What a lead in. What a, give us your <laughs> give us your favorite Lexington restaurant that's not named Cheddar's. We, I do love the buffalo <laughs> chicken wrap. But oh. yeah. <laughs> we could talk a lot about about this. Okay, I've got a, I've got a few and we're just going to have to go with it here. Let's do okay. It. Um of course, so I think steak wise, right? Ruby's or Tony's, either one, whatever suits your personality best. I like Tony's. Mm. Um myself, Team mm-hmm. Tony's. Team Tony's. Um but that's kind of everybody. But I think the one restaurant that really that I love is Jay Alexander's. Mm, I know it's kind of yes. it's kind of odd. And no, but um, it's great. Lauren and I started going there, and we just every time we go, the service is spectacular. Yes, I love the vibe of the restaurant. Like I think it's different than a lot of the restaurants in town. But the service is always great, and it, it's not like I go there to get one thing. Like I honestly, couldn't tell you one thing in there that oh you got to try this. Like it's all pretty good. But yeah. it's just the the environment, yeah. the atmosphere. Um, they have French press coffee at the end of a oh. meal, which is fantastic fantastic but like it's just it's just a nice like it's just a nice uh restaurant and then the next one this is if you catch it if you catch it rolling around town if you can get the drake's food truck (laughs) i'm not joking that basket with those those pretzels and beer cheese and the the burgers are literally fresh off the grill with those fries i'm just telling you if you can get that basket if you see that drake's food truck pull over they will sell you a basket for 12 13 bucks flag them down flag them down <laughs> and it's fantastic so even even if you say oh, i go to drake's it's not the, it's not the same it's a different it's fresh out the kitchen uh it's fantastic oh baby don't you think a little bit with the jay alexander's comment i think we're all looking a little bit for that experience you know i'm not going to go too much into that but i think our generation's kind of we were kind of the uh you know, quit. We want everything instantly. We want to have ass, but we all. But now, I think it's moving a little bit more into that experience. We want that nice. Uh, right. There's a lot to that. We could talk about that for yeah. for a day. Yeah, it, agreed, agreed. And I think especially right. Well, for me, just speaking for me, with kids, it's like if mm-hmm. if Lauren and I can get out for a date, mm-hmm. we want it to be like something that is like. That is more of an experience. It's yeah. nice. It's like it's calming. It's yes. a little. Ra- it, it's a lot of different things. Um, and when I see like where these food prices are going with kids, I'm just like, kids, 
this here is a restaurant. We may never step inside one. <laughs> um, so <laughs> when we do, we're all splitting uh, one meal, and we're we're all gonna be. That is something we That's do good. that I my older self right would have mm-hmm. laughed at me. But oh, like yeah. when we go to Tony's, we just split. Like we split a you know. Yeah. A, a fillet and oh, yeah. get some uh, truffle wedges and oh, yeah. you know I mean it's like hey Boom. there you go I yeah I, I used to feel bad about it don't feel bad no. at all no and I tip Split well so it's like, yeah it's just like I, we're splitsies yeah Dude, I mean, I like the. We'll get, Rachel and I will do the surf and the turf. Oh. Each one of, and then we'll split the. Yeah. We'll make it a surf and turf, baby. Come on. See, and I think again, as you as you get older, yeah. you stop really caring what anyone else thinks, and yes. you're just like, I don't care who sees this. I'm splitting the meal. Let's go. I'm even gonna split a salad. You want a salad? <laughs> Let's split a salad. Oh, they split it for us in the back. That's kind of nice. They, that's that's pretty. One sweet. thing at Jay's that they do. They do. They have no problem with doing the splits. Um, I love that. Yeah, it's great. I mean, that's all back to your boy Sinclair. He's splitting meals, probably. He's going to live till he's 120. He may quarter the meals. You know what I mean? Like I like it, but it's it's a good thing. It's yeah. a good thing, Ryan. Brother, I what's your it. favorite? Man, I, aren't you a Corto guy? I'm a big Corto Lima guy, but man, I think that Jay Alexander's that's a great that's a great spot. We're big OBC too down mm. in Texas. We love going there. There's a couple of things on the OBC menu and that wall of bourbon. I mean, Oof. in Lexington, Kentucky. Oh. There's another caveat that I think I need to mention. Please. I'm a very uh, bubble-oriented uh, person, oh. meaning that I kind of stay in my bubble. So <laughs> I live in Beaumont. I don't really cross over uh, Tate's Creek unless I'm going to Sittenary to drop my kids <laughs> off. And when we are out and about, we stick pretty close to home. And so if it's outside that, that, that <laughs> circle, I... Unless you're Costco, like you really got to bring it for, to get me to go to go out. That's like when Ben Allen asked me to go to Sherry's. I'm like, right. that's that's out of town, Ben. <laughs> that's a two hour. I do. I fly there. Like, how do I get there? You want me to drive there? It's on the other side of Costco. It's on what's the, over there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, man. no, that's spoken like a true Lexingtonian. Well, I just, I've I've learned that about the Lexingtonians. They they've got their their lane. But you specific, I, I respect that. I oh well, respect that. I, yeah, you know, yeah. you just, can't have it all. You can't have it all. No. I try. I, you no. can't have it all. I mean, you know, and what? I like eating at four o'clock. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. we're yeah. early bird. We're we're already living that sixty lifestyle. Like I don't like <laughs> seven thirty. I'm like, who eats at seven thirty? <laughs> who does that? Yeah, like no, I've got three kids. I eat it. We eat it sometimes three p.m. before we pick up. <laughs> like, do you want an early dinner? Like, let's do it three p.m. Jays, come on, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I love it. It might even get the senior discount if you get there early enough. I hope so. The uh, hey, on that note, on your Lexingtonians and some of the some of the things you love about our our beautiful city, do you have a favorite street in Lexington? I threw that one in there. I told Lauren uh, I was going to say Old Field Way just because we did not, but no, that uh, <laughs> that's a good. One. I re- I really do- I really don't, Ryan. Okay. I really don't. Yeah. But I, I will say there are some some just gems mm-hmm. around town mm-hmm. that like. I don't even know they exist. Like I don't even think they show up on maps. It's when you get lost and you roll down it, and you're just like, "What is this?" Um, do you have any off the top of your head? Like, man, we uh, I've got a few. I mean, South Hanover comes up. Mm. People love driving down mm-hmm. South Ashland. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But there's so many great neighborhoods in Lexington. It's like, how do you really? I tried to do a top five list once of like top five streets. I mean, you think of Mintel Park down there too. That's just fun. Classic think of Cherokee Park. Yep. There's some the great Lexington streets. Um, and there's some hidden gems, Ellesmere Park. There's some other things that you would never even really, you know. Yeah. I mean, when I get lost back in Lakewood, yeah. I'm just like, am I allowed oh to gosh. be back here? Right. Like, is somebody <laughs> going to track me down? <laughs> like, I come in peace. I'm just here to look. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, no, there there are some beautiful yeah. streets that are just. Uh, but even like Beaumont, Hart, the one Beaumont, Heartland, and they've started to mature now. Oh, where yes. It's like. This feels like, I mean, wow. You drive into some of these spots. Oh, yeah. I still like to keep it like not because I know downtown could be, we could name a ton of town. But I, but I think like in Heartland, Abbey Wood, Mm, like uh, Abbey Wood's awesome. And then, oh, I just had it. Oh, I just had it, Ryan. It's okay. It's there. (laughs) It'll come. What neighborhood? I I just lost it. Yeah. It'll come. It'll come back. It'll come back. We'll hit it before the end of the show. It'll come back. Yeah. Um, Back to a little bit of personal. What what's on yeah. your nightstand right now? What book is on your nightstand that's half read? Well, 
that's a great uh, that's a great question. And I actually, I used to have almost too many books on my nightstand mm-hmm. that just got to be a little like this is kind of like let's let's minimize this a little bit. Um, but so one book for sure. It's a book that got me through the pandemic, and it's called Keep Going by mm-hmm. Austin Kleon, who's uh, he's mm-hmm. from Austin, Texas. It, yeah, it's just it was kind of a random book, but it's like it's just you know a short book it has a lot of art in it and it's just like so straight and to the point and like during those days in 2020 like I needed to read Mm -hmm. that book Mm -hmm. and it was written many years ago and so it just was like that was awesome and it's just a reminder you know that like whether you have the best day or the worst day you have to keep going. Mm-hmm. You got to show up for your family. You got to show up for your spouse. Got to show up for the the company. You know, mm-hmm. you, you got to show up. You got to show up for yourself. And so um, that's always a good, a really good uh, reminder. Um, there's another book by a guy named Kevin Thompson called Happily. It's all about marriage and relationships and how to, uh, you know, because that's another thing that you like, that takes work. You know, oh, a yeah. lot of people, and I think that's, you know, like that's something that uh, is very important, you know, that like yeah. that also like is not a set it and forget it. Like it yeah. takes work. Yeah. Um, and so that is, is there for a reminder as well. And then the latest book that I have that I love is a book called 4,000 Years. That's the one I'm, mi- I'm midway mm-hmm. through or 4,000 years, 4,000 weeks, mm-hmm. um, which is the average number of weeks in our lifespan, which is a little. Yeah. I'm sort of yeah, shocked. Yeah, 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 that. yeah, yeah. That's what's 80, 80 years is like, and then, wow. damn, but it, but again, it's a book. That one is really good. It goes back to, and that's where I am on this you know, work life balance thing with priorities. That that's what it's all about, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, and one thing that he talks about in the book that I love, it is this notion. Everyone's heard of FOMO, right? Like the oh, fear yeah. of missing out. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous, right? Like, so w- ridiculous. I mean, just the thought of it. You're always going to be missing out on something. Like Ryan, me and you right now could get on Instagram, and within ten seconds could find hundreds, yes. thousands of people doing something much more interesting <laughs> than we are and somewhere much more beautiful than this conference room, oh, right? Yeah. Like you're always gonna miss out on stuff. And so yeah. he actually switches that and it's it's the the it's the joy of missing out. It's it's like understanding and conceptualizing and knowing that like I know I'm not gonna be able to do everything and that's okay. And it's just like, and and from the fear, it turns it into the joy to where you just remove that. Because again, years ago, like 2015, 16, like I was a true believer in this FOMO. Like I thought I had to do everything. Mm -hmm. And you do that and it can just lead you down some different paths that you're like, I would rather not do that, Mm -hmm. you know? And so this whole joy of missing out is a beautiful thing. I love it. Jomo. Jomo, baby. Wow. And it just lets you, again, I love focus that. on the things that really matter to you. You know, and I just think that that's uh, it's a it's a powerful thing. So wow. that book, I can't wait to keep going and finishing it. Our man, Jack, has been on a little different sleep schedule here lately. So my morning 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. session of reading a book, he's like, Dad, you're not reading a book. You're holding me. Where's the Cheerios? And I'm like, can you sit and just watch me read? He's like, no, nope. I can't. And then at six thirty, bro and sis are getting up, and you got to get us to school. Let's go. And so, uh, yeah, but it's it's beautiful, all in due time. Mm-hmm. I can't wait that's to right. read that. Well, that's awesome. That's, yeah, man. That's a. I mean, I feel like FOMO is even controlling our real estate market a lot right now. Oh, so what a wild concept to really think through. What a JOMO. I love that. And that was four thousand weeks. Four thousand weeks. Love it. It's it's really good, man. That's really good. Uh, last couple quick hitters here. What was the first car you owned? A black 96 Honda Accord yes. EXL oh, baby. with a four-cylinder because we had to keep the price down a little bit. Yeah, four-cylinder. Yeah. Couldn't give you that much juice. It was amazing. But um, Great car. Well, what's even better, right, it's the things that were inside the car. There were uh, two 12-inch JL audio woofers in the back. Uh, it was there. There were your. I bought European taillights that oh, um, the the folks at Trailblazers happily put on <laughs> the vehicle for me. Um, it was when I pulled into Waterford, you could hear me coming. Oh, and baby! I, Next that episode. would now see that would be something I'd go back and tell my 16 year old self is to don't do that. <laughs> 
<laughs> now now like, that you've got sleeping babies. Like, just if you want to just, just, just make the neighbors away. Yeah. Just wait till you're dry. Like, you know. Wait till you're on the the interstate highway. We don't. Everybody doesn't need to hear the trunk rattling. Like not everybody. What was on there? Was it a lot? Was it Dre? Was it? Oh yeah, yeah. California. Oh yeah, Goody Mob, Doctor Dre, Tupac. But then also like Leonard Skinner and Zeppelin. I was very. I I had a good repertoire. Yeah, yeah. A George Strait run was big in college oh, yeah. when I had to drive for the fraternity. Um, several of the uh, of my fraternity brothers loved hearing George Strait run with the twelve inch woofers in the back. That was always highly requested, so that was great. Oh, I love it! Well, that's a good <laughs> what a good trip down memory lane. Yes, I too had sub- subwoofers, and I was very proud of them. I don't, I don't think they were. You had JL Audio. Yeah. I think I was a Kickstarter. If that was that was that a brand kicker. I, I, Kicker, kicker, yes. and then you got the kicker competitions, oh, you have kicker solos. Yeah, there's oh. a lot of. Do you have dynamite in your Gosh. trunk? No. Oh yeah, you remember that stuff? Oh, it was like yeah. the yeah the dampening. The, yeah, the dampening. Who the knew if it worked? But it looked cool. I was like, <laughs> I got that dynamite. Like, and I thought it would just silence everything. <laughs> and I'm like, I guess I didn't understand how sound worked. You know, <laughs> like, Waterford didn't think it worked. Waterford was like, you need a dynamite the whole car, <laughs> not just the trunk, Todd. Not just the trunk. Oh gosh! Last one, the final one will be kind of a repeat, but then we'll just wrap it up. But uh, if you didn't live in Kentucky, where you've joyfully lived your whole life, where where would you live? In the where would you live? You know, I thought about this one, Ryan, and I cannot even lie. And we can make this a quick because I do want to get to the hidden gems. Yeah, I have a hidden gem. It, it, yeah. Like I don't. I'm such a big family like guy. Like I love my parents and my brother. Like I. I I would on wherever they are, you know, I mean, that nice. sounds ridiculous, but that's like, great. that is where like, that's home. And, and, but if now you say, if we all were going to move uh, together somewhere as a family, let's add some caveats Here we go. to that. I, I would just say it's places that we already go to or, or enjoy, you know? And so yeah. it's like, I don't know. It, it would have to be no bigger than Lexington. Yeah. Like this is as big as size, like yeah. my world wants to work. And, uh, and just like a slower pace, man. Yeah. Like I just like I, I don't know. Like I just love Lexington so much. Like I really do. When I think of it, it's like I don't know. Like yeah. I don't even know. Uh, mm-hmm. Somewhere in South Carolina, somewhere you know North Carolina, like yeah. somewhere in the Carolinas, probably. And then if we're just getting real, like let's let's just get real nuts somewhere like in Northern California or something there like that. Go. Like really, right. uh, yeah. My we're uncle lives in way. California, and it's like. Just when I visit out there, I'm just like, but it's like, is it too good to be true? Is it too good? Is it sustainable? Yeah, and I don't have to like drive anywhere for work, like the traffic and everything. But it, but like, you know, all things considered, I think Carolina's California. Man, the, same, Tells same Carolina. Wavelength. Yeah, man. Tells California. The Carolinas are so attractive. They are. You got mountains, coast. All, yeah. Yeah, all the good things. Gosh, <sighs> but I do. Love, I mean, Lexington. It's it's really hard to beat the size. It's just a home run. I tell a lot of people what you just said. It's just perfect. It is. I mean, you can get across town in 20 minutes, and you got everything here you want. And how it's grown. Yeah. Like, I mean, even just, like, the campus, you know. And oh, and yeah. what's funny, I heard that, like, when, when I was going to U.K., I would hear people be like, oh, my gosh, like, when I went to U.K., and that's exactly what I'm saying now, yeah. you know. So it's just, like – it's going to continue to evolve. Like this mm-hmm. is just where it is right now in this moment in time. Like the dorm I was at Hagen hall, shout out Hagen hall. Let's go. It's gone. You know, it replaced by something much better than a, uh, you know, a, well, do you with, remember what block you were in in Hagen hall? <laughs> yeah. What were you? I was a three, bro. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't, oh, so I don't, I know I had a window that overlooked the, uh, uh the library because yep, I thought, yep. you know, at that point it would be real cool to have a, a gym beam neon sign like in your window. <laughs> what well, again, things college kids <laughs> do. Like I love those neon signs. You're I was looking like, at K layer too. Yeah. Down, looking I down at K layer. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. Like I just, I, yeah, I don't know. What. You would have been two. You'd been either one or two. I was an RA in Hagen Hall. You were an RA? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, but, oof, yeah. <laughs> well, I love it, bro. Hagen Hall. <laughs> but the, shout out to Hagen Hall. Shout out to Hagen Hall. But, that's, uh, but yeah, just the evolution of Lexington mm-hmm. and, and with what's still 
happening and what's coming. It's just like this is a ma- and seeing like what happened with Rupp and everything down there in that mm. district. What's happening right now? Yeah, like when that gets completed, game changer for the game for changer. the city, man. Yeah. Like I Let's mean, go. it's going to be so cool. We're gonna so have a cool. soccer club. I mean, yeah. If geez. that gets a pre- yeah, I mean, there's just there's so many fun, cool things that are that are happening right in our backyard. It's just like this is that's pretty amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Last but not least, brother, some hidden gems of Lexington or the surrounding area. Okay. Caveat, as with anything, got to add some context. Now, a hidden gem is only a hidden gem if you don't already know about it. So I may say something, which I'm going to, and you and some of the listeners may be like, Dude, I, of course. Well, I'm just telling you, I've lived here my whole life, and I didn't discover any of these things I'm about to tell you until Lauren uh, basically introduced me to him and I've since like just fallen in love with it. And it's basically Ryan, don't laugh. Okay. It's, it's nature. Okay. Hey bro. Nature. Okay. And so here's what, where were they? Here are the hidden gems. We have so many cool little spots in Lexington where you can just go for a walk, you can get some fresh air, you can see some beautiful trees, and you can literally just kind of unplug. You can put your phone on airplane mode, you can just chill out, Mm. which I think that is something that everybody needs, is to just chill out. And this was all born, like kind of out of the pandemic, but, and I'm gonna get to something else at the end, but like, so what places are they? So number one, you've got McConnell Springs, Mm. you know, which is just, such an easy little walk and that's kind of a fun one you can take your kids to because there's some water features and kind of a story with it like that that's kind of neat and then you hit like afterwards you can go to goodfellas pizza or something and make like a little afternoon of it and that's like a quick easy you know mcconnell springs super easy to beaumont trail I know this is, my parents have lived in Beaumont for 20 years. I didn't know the trail existed until two years ago, <laughs> three years ago. Till you moved in. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, it's like hilarious. Yeah. But that trail, it's amazing. Oh. Huge trees on both sides. Like just, you can get out there, just do some walking and just like, it's, it's awesome. Okay. And then of course, Ravens Run, which I think is oh, 20, 30 minutes out Taste Creek Road. And you get there and you feel like you're in another world. And it's 20 to 30 minutes away. It's unbelievable. That one is a little more strenuous, but I like highly recommend that it's, it's unbelievable. Um, and then the last one, this last place I had heard about it, I'd heard about it, but I thought like if I was going to go to the red river gorge that I had to have a backpack with grappling hooks and special shoes and you know like he, like meals in my back with like I had to know how to like MREs yeah MREs and I had to know how to make a fire like I just thought it was so much more I thought it was just I could never do this Lauren took me there Augsbury Ridge was was mm-hmm. my first um, encounter with the gorge and I just fell in love instantly now that's an hour hour and a half away but it's like if you've never done that before or if you just thought like this is ridiculous like i can't go to the gore i don't know the first thing about it like go Mm -hmm. enjoy it have fun it is it's amazing i mean i even have a pair of like hiking boots now some danner boots ryan they're unbelievable the first time I went, I had some old Ultra Boost that, like, I oh, swear yeah. a rock could penetrate the bottom of my shoe. <laughs> and, like, I just went. And guess what? Everything was fine. No one's like, Your dude, you're wearing Adidas Ultra Boost. You get get off. Get, get off, off the here. trail. Get off the trail. No, it was fine. But I just think, that, like, these are places all around us right now where we are in Lexington. And, like, they, they're free. You can go enjoy them. It can be during your lunch hour. It can be on a week. It, it can be any time. Um, and it's unbelievable. And I just think there's so many uh, health benefits, uh, mental benefits. There's just so many good things about getting out, going for a walk. And it's like you don't have to have a podcast on. You don't have to be talking to anybody. You literally just go, just go mm-hmm. you know, and just like just go vibe out, chill out. And I just think that. That is something that uh, is lacking right now um, in mm-hmm. our just in our world, and I just think that's something that uh, would be really helpful. Man, that's that's awesome, and hey, that is a hidden gem to a lot of people. I mean, McConnell Springs, like that's a really fun one. Yeah, Ravens Run. We don't go there enough. We've been a couple times. We love it, but we don't choose to do it. We need to choose to do it. You would never that's even awesome. know McConnell Springs is there. 
I mean, no. it is in the middle of this like, you know, industrial yes. little area. And then you just keep driving. And you're like, what is this? You know? And then it's just, it's just a cool little it's great. spot. Yeah. I love the post game recommendation of a uh, little good fellas down in the oh, distillery. You got to call. couple it with the little pizza. And that's just like yeah. Miguel's at Red River Gore. Like we did that. And it's like, again, I don't know if the pizza is that great, but I know after that, that experience, it was darn good. Well, and Oxier Ridge, you pick probably, well, oh. I mean, there's a lot of great trails at the Gorge, but that's probably one of the best. That's like knockout, and, wonderful trail. And that's where, fun fun fact, is that that's where I uh, proposed to Lauren, was at the Gorge, and I had this, like probably four spots picked out where I wanted to do it, and each time it was it was uh, not, just, people were all around that day. I was like, can seriously, there are some days you're the only person there, mm-hmm. and there are other, I'm like, can I just get some space somebody, for five minutes? But uh, Somebody taped the found, part of the trail off. Found a great space. It was fantastic. But I just, I love it, man. And, yeah, and again, that is something that even my 35-year-old self would never be caught. Like, going for a walk, I was like, are you serious? Right. Like, I need to be doing high intensity interval training and like i need to be like lift i just it's like no man just go for a walk just yeah. chill out go yeah. for a walk anyway. man, that's so good that's that's so good any any final thoughts todd before we put a put a bow on this thing anything you've got you want to share oh ryan so many things you crushed you, it you've first done a great all. job you've done a, i mean i think here or should we pat where's a baton i'm passing <laughs> the baton no, no to baton. you as as host of mm-hmm. agents of the brokerage podcast hard pass hard pass <laughs> hard pass you're taking my seat uh, next time no i guess you know we, we did a lot of personal stuff on this one but but and even for the real estate stuff um it, it just i guess to wrap it up i'll, I'll just say that, that like we right so i'm you know, about to be 40 and, and, you know, and Tyler, my younger brother, he's in his, you know, younger thirties and they just had their first child. And, uh, it, it's just the, the opportunity that we have right now in this world, like we can complain about a lot of things, right. And especially you draw it back to this local real estate market that we're in mm-hmm. right now, mm-hmm. which in my 15 years, like it's the tightest, most competitive real estate market that I've ever seen. Like no doubt about no it. No doubt. Um, but in saying that, like the opportunities that, that we have as real estate practitioners, the opportunities we have as, as dads, as husbands, as fam- like it is just so amazing. And if you look at life from that angle about like, look how good we have it, like what amazing opportunities that we have versus look at all the things we don't have, look at all of this, look at all of that. Cause you can look at it from either way Mm -hmm. and you can make a compelling case either way you want. But one, I think leads you down a certain path and the other leads you down a certain path. And I have been down both paths and I'm gladly choosing the one of abundance 100% 100% of the time now. Boom. And that is, I just think when you see people who are genuinely happy, who are genuinely fulfilled, whether they make $30,000 or $3 million, mm-hmm. that kind of is secondary. You know, it is that mindset and that abundance mindset about, hey, look at all this stuff that we have. Like, look how amazing this is. Yeah. And when you really believe that, and this is where the brokerage comes in. Yeah. When you are surrounded by people mm-hmm. who add fuel to that fire that you're stoking, now all of a sudden you have something that is special, which I talk about all the time. That is not something that you can just go out and duplicate, you know? And you know who my inner circle is. And those people were all chosen for a, 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 a specific, like, hey, like, we're on this journey together. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to learn from you. I want to like, I want to learn from your example. I want to see how you're doing things. And, um, let me bounce some things off of you. And so only good is going to come from that. And I just think that like, when you look at life like that, you look at business like that, like good things are going to happen. And it's not saying that it's all going to be rosy and that you're just going to hop and skip along everywhere. And you're never going to have any bad days because we all know that's not true. But, at the end, I think you're sitting in a spot where you're just like, 
I'm glad I choose to, to live my life like this. I'm glad I choose to handle my business like this. And at the end of it all, I'm very thankful for what I'm doing right now. And Ryan, I could talk all day about that. No, man, that but was, that's it. That's a great button up that abundance mindset. I, I mean, I do, I do think so often we take for granted what we have around us every day. And here at the Burkridge, I'm incredibly thankful just to be surrounded by just great people, high character people, people uh, like yourself and like others that we get to talk to on a mm -hmm. daily basis. I love these people. I love having a conversation and with, with, you know, anybody that we pass by getting coffee, getting, you know, quick call, phone call, whatever it is. So it's, we, we, we're very grateful to be part of uh, the brokerage family. And uh, Todd, thank you for, man, everything today, Sharon, you've been fantastic. You took the hot seat and rocked it. And so uh, we're excited to get the broker, the agents of the brokerage podcast going again. I've been your guest host, one and only time, Ryan Hilliard and uh, Todd back. Thank you again for being on here with us. Thanks, Ryan. A plus, man. And, uh, you, A plus. You rocked it, baby. See thank, you next time. Thanks again. Looking forward to the next episode. Hold up. Oh. Wait.